this is the first example not very difficult first we will define the events which we are interested in So can you tell me what is A and what is B? If you know it, then say it. We can move forward, right? Okay. A is car white and car is white and B is accident happens, right? And then what is A complement? Right, there are only two cars of car, uh, two kind of cars. If, if the car is not white, then it is black. Right? And what is probability of B given A? Do we need it? Right. So again, th this emphasizes the fact that uh, you should keep your mobile off while in the class <laughs> and uh, the ratio of probability of B given A and probability of B given A complement is the only important thing. Right. So then I can just Is that okay? So this is the probability of accident given the car is white. This is the probability of accident given the car is black. And we know that it is five, right? Five times more likely. Perfect. So I can just divide everything by probability of B by A complement. You can think of it that way, but I can substitute this now, right? And then what do I know about probability of A? Point 0.1 or one by 10, right? So can you tell me what will be the answer? So probability that car white given accident is five by 14, five by 14, right? Everyone, simple, right? Just the important one to realize was that the ratio was important, not the actual numbers, and that you can do. Good. Let's take another example. Uh, there is a cancer test. If the patient has cancer, it gives you positive outcome. It tells you that the patient has cancer with probability 0.9. That means if you have cancer, it would give a negative result with probability 0.1, right? Similarly, it's, it's, it, has, it has the same kind of an error on the other side. If you don't have, if the patient doesn't have cancer, it will give a negative outcome. It should give the negative outcome, right? If you don't have cancer, it should say that it is negative, uh, it gives the answer negative with probability 0.9. And if you don't have cancer, it will still say that you have cancer with probability 0.9. Right? Now, uh, do people know what is false positive, false negative? How many people know what is false positive, false negative? Okay, good. So what is false negative? Right. So important thing to remember here is that positive and negative are the, are the results of the test, right? Whether you have cancer, do not have cancer as predicted by the test, that is positive negative. What does false say? The test is true or false, right? Test gave the correct outcome or not. Okay. So this is tests outcome. This is our interpretation of tests. So false positive means test gave the outcome positive. It's a false positive. That means the person had, did not have cancer, right? False negative means the person 
yes, the person had cancer, but the test gave a negative result, right? So what is the probability of false negative? This is what we want to figure out. Okay, or false positive, one of those. If the test comes out to be positive, we want to find out it is false or not, or false negative, right? So let's see. Let's uh, define the event. A is that person has cancer. B is test comes out to be positive. So given that the test is positive, sorry, I did not define false negative correctly. We will, we will, this always confuses me also, but in mathematics, this is what we want, right? Probability given that test comes out positive, does the person actually have cancer, right? And as I told you before, most of the people think the answer is 0.9, which is going to be incorrect. And let's see, okay? So probability of A given B is probability of Sorry. Right, and when I take a look at this formula, I realize that something is missing, right? So what do we want? The chance that a person has cancer or the ratio of PA to PA complement, right? So what do you think in general population? 0.1, so one out of 10 people have cancer. 0.1%, oh, thanks, okay. One in thousand, one person has, okay. But let's be, you know, positive or negative, I don't know in, how do you want to say it. Let's say it is one by 100. That means a, one out of 100 people have cancer, okay. That's kind of a pessimistic scenario. But if you look at it, can we calculate what is the probability? Uh, don't shout out your answer. Let everyone figure it out. We will take a minute. Uh, so Actually, what you want to do is kind of calculate these three answers. When probability of A is 1 by 10, it is 1 by 100, it is 1 by 1000. Did I write 1 by 1000? No, I write 1 by 100. I wrote 1 by 100 again. Okay, anyone for one by 100, when one by 100, if one out of 100 people have cancer, one by 12, okay. If one by 10 is the probability of half, okay. Everyone agrees? Okay, from backside, like last one by 1000, what is the probability? One by right, and this is the lesson. Once again, the lesson is that if you're on Zoom meeting, keep yourself muted if you are drinking something. Um, right, so 
what is the lesson here? You see again that Bayes theorem tells you base probability counts, right? You see the clear difference. And most of the time, we don't even think about it. If this was a very pessimistic scenario, like, you know, like a cancer world or something, a lot of climate changes happened or something, and uh, right, most of the people are getting cancer, this will be very bad. And then still, right, still, it is much far away from 0.9, right? And if you take the actual estimates, I don't know what is the actual estimate, but somewhere between here, the probability that you have cancer is extremely low. That basically means, and again, see, why is this happening? Always go to the extreme case and analyze. If nobody had cancer, right, or very, very few people had cancer, then your probability of coming out positive will still be there. Right? That is what this example is kind of showing. So you can take it one by 10,000 and you will still see that uh, uh, since uh, you can, uh, since there are a lot of people who, are, when you test, uh, most of the time you will find a negative person. So still there is a considerable probability that you test as positive. Right? So this fraction is really, really important. Okay, this is the this is the crux of base theorem, right? One of the exercises which you can do is actually make a small program where you uh, where you input probability of a and you see how this probability, right? So you can kind of see that even if the cancer test was accurate with probability 0 0.99, in this kind of a scenario, it's not a very accurate test for cancer. Right, so any disease which is very very rare, the accurate the, the accuracy of that test should be extremely high. Otherwise, you know, its prediction will be mostly be false. Right, and coming back, okay, so yeah, uh, uh, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what is false positive? If you did not have cancer, you still got a positive answer. That would happen with point one. Right? False negative means you had cancer, but still you got a negative. So false happens with 0.1. True positive and true negative happens with 0.9. Okay? And then you want to calculate the probability given the test comes up positive. Lesson again is the is to look at the base probability. Okay. Uh, let's skip this. Uh, how many people have heard of Monty Hall problem? Okay, good. Many of you. So, uh, are, are you convinced with the answer? Of how many people are convinced with the answer? Okay, okay. So, if you are convinced, that's good. Uh, I will give you an exercise who, who are convinced also. For people who are not convinced with the answer, I will try to convince them. But first, what is the Monty Hall problem? Monty Hall was a famous host, American TV show host in a game. And in this game, you have three doors. You don't know what is behind them, but the promise is two good and one car. Okay. And then you are asked to pick a door. You pick a door. Now there is at least one door which does not have car behind it, which is not yours. So suppose I pick D1. If I pick D1, then Monty will pick D3. Okay, because that's the only door left which does not have car behind it. If I pick D2, he will pick either D1 or D3. So, except the gate which I have picked, he will reveal one other go to. Clear? Then the question is should I switch? Should I stay with my choice? Should I switch or it doesn't matter? If you have looked at the solution first, then don't answer. If you haven't, then tell me what do you feel? Uh, let's, let's clarify, Is there, are there any questions about the problem? Uh, so 
there has to be right either you have seen it before otherwise there has to be questions right like suppose i pick door 2 with what probability does monty pick d1 and with what probability does he pick d3 right that should be uniform right so that's one assumption that if i pick the car door then he will pick d1 or d3 other two doors with uniform probability so such assumptions have to be made and uh, so a list of assumptions and the first obvious assumption is you are not interested in food right uh, so so you want car if you need car then if you choose the door with car monty uniformly picks that to open okay and 2 3 4 are kind of obvious from the problem right to make sense otherwise it won't be a fair problem car should be behind any door with uniform probability and fourth assumption is is a simplification so that we can solve it okay but we will do this later uh, first look at 2 and 3 right one is your choice to kind of believe or not but 2 and 3 are you fine with these assumptions makes sense right okay so now if these are the assumptions now the pro is is the problem clear anyone for whom the problem is not clear yes what is the question that is the question should we switch or should we not switch should we stay with our choice yes yes so then so the, the door which he has opened is out of again are you interested in goat right so once he has shown the goat door that's out now there are two doors remaining one which i have picked one which i have not picked should i switch or not switch Switch means picking the remaining door. Same door. I will stay with my choice. If I had picked D one, I will stay with. D1. Okay. So people who have who don't know the answer to this, how many people think I should switch? Okay. Uh, how many people think I should not switch? It does. Uh, How people think it it doesn't matter. It should be equal problem. Don't worry. There is no problem with. See that is why that is that is why I am doing all this so that we we find out flaws in our intuition, right? So uh, yes. What is the correct answer? We should switch. Okay. But now the question is why? And for people who are convinced that we should switch. try to come up with a simpler example than this which captures the crux of this okay you understand the problem i i will show you that door but this is a too complicated an example of showing now suppose it is your task to convince someone else that i should switch think of a smaller example think of a clear simpler example which shows that for others let's try to see why we should switch okay any questions about the problem itself again no okay good okay before i ask that question how many people here are fan of donald trump okay good i am safe now so then i can post this question okay so uh trump tweets equally on saturday and sunday let's assume that with equal probability we know that when he posts on saturday his tweets are half times useful half times garbage that's kind of an over statement but still let's go with the question <laughs> if he posts on sunday then it is total garbage okay donald uh, trump is obviously some random politician Uh, all characters are fictional in the story so <laughs> so uh, the setting is clear if he posts on saturday then it is half useful half garbage sunday fully garbage right suppose on friday you attended shan's show partied hard and then slept for two days woke up on monday and then saw a tweet obviously the tweet did not have date and everything uh, the someone told you a tweet and it was a garbage tweet 
what would you think is it more likely that the that the tweet was posted on sunday or saturday is that clear to everyone anyone for whom this is not clear sure do you see the connection with monty hall problem now what is the connection then what is saturday what is sunday the remaining dose right so the point here is that let us assume that i picked door 1 and monty opened door right so the point is what is the probability that monty opened door 2 if i had picked car then two doors are left monty would have picked door 2 with probability half if i had picked the door behind goat then monty was forced to pick door right so clear saturday and sunday so monty has picked door 2 this is the tweet is garbage if i had picked do if i had picked the door behind car then there was half probability that monty had picked door 2 if i had picked the door uh, behind goat then monty would have definitely picked door 2 right so if i had picked the door with uh, with goat the probability of monty picking door 2 was higher right and that is why i should believe that i have picked the door with goat that's the intuition behind this and even if this is not at not clear uh, let's do the mathematics behind it let's fix out things and see for ourselves you know if nothing else is convincing then we define events and we get the answer through mathematics right so let's define our events the obvious events are uh di is car behind door i b is the event that monty opened door 2 right remember we pick door 1 and monty opens door 2 what quantity do we want what quantity do are we interested in probability d1 by b or probability d3 by b which is higher right this is what we want to figure out this is the probability where we should switch this is the probability where we should stay put problem with a formulation anything sounds good right so let's say we want to figure out whether probability of d1 by b is less than or higher than half or not right whether it is less than equal to half because probability of d1 by b plus probability of d3 by b should be one right and you can actually do the calculation see that also but intuitively this should make sense right so now what is probability of d1 by b how will we find that out come on how will we find that out bayes theorem right so probability of b given d1 probability of d1 divided by what else b given okay let's write all the terms so this is definitely a probability of b right because d1 d2 d3 are is joint events which partition the space and now you realize that i can cancel this 
this was my assumption that the car was behind doors with uniform color. that assumption was taken care of now what is probability of b given d2 so if if the car was behind door 2 what is the probability that monty opens door that's zero right uh, should i write the events uh, di is car behind door i b is the event that monty picks door 2 right and what do i know about probability of b given d1 this is half what is probability of b given d3 one this will be a similar calculation or you can do it directly okay so there is twice as much probability that the car is behind door 3 and that's why our next obvious choice should be to switch right in the tweet question you can exactly define these events p would be the event that the tweet is sorry no 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 what what did we what did we know what what did we find out we, the, it was given that the tweet was garbage whether it was posted on saturday or sunday right so so b will actually be the thing which you know which is that tweet is garbage right and d1 and d3 you can think of as posted on sunday posted on saturday okay so to understand monty hall problem in some sense you have two steps first is to convince the donald trump question right that is kind of clear to everyone right that if there was more probability that uh, tweet was garbage on sunday and if i see the tweet as garbage then i believe that must have been posted on sunday more than saturday once you know this then applying the path and there is a clear path okay this uh, solves the monty hall problem if you go to wikipedia you will see multiple things and those are mostly about the assumptions okay but if you have the assumptions in place i think this is the most natural solution are we okay move on to something else should i give you a few minutes to get out of monty hall hangover or you're all convinced and okay with monty hall problem right so you're okay with monty hall problem let's look at something which we will or you will encounter definitely in your computer science course which is application of bayes theorem in machine and i talked about it in the beginning there is a clear uh, kind of a parallel between hypothesis testing and what we do in machine in hypothesis testing we had some experiments and you wanted to figure out what was our original theory it's a clear parallel in machine learning where you assume some model some parameters you say that okay suppose my data is coming from bernoulli with probability p that means i will every time i toss a coin it will succeed with let's say half probability half probability i have some belief in the system now i observe some data observing data is same as experiment once i have seen the data i want to figure out what is the probability of some parameter being correct what is my new belief how do i see okay if you if you if you see 10 heads 
you might want to think that probably the coin is biased. Right? Again, you cannot say everything with certainty, but we have to change our model. And how do we change our model is, uh, is exactly the question of hypothesis testing and hence Bayes theorem should be useful. This is a broader branch parameter estimation where again the question is you have some parameters, you have some distribution given. Let's say your data comes from normal distribution. What are the parameters to define normal distribution? Non-standard normal distribution. How do we define it? Mean and variance, right? Mu and sigma. Once you specify mu and sigma, my PDF is fixed, everything is fixed. So these are the two parameters. Someone doesn't tell you what is mu sigma, they tell you that the distribution is normal. So then you believe, okay, probably mu is zero, sigma is one, or there is a uniform probability of mu from zero to one, or zero, one, two with equal probability, whatever. You have some belief, and then someone gives you an output of this normal distribution. X1 is equal to 0.5, X2 is equal to 0.1, so on and so forth. Then what do you believe? What is the probability of your mu being zero? What is the probability of mu being one? This is the question of parameter estimation. Or what, is, uh, what do you think was your original? This can be asked in multiple ways. And this is the question of parameter estimation. There is maximum likelihood parameter estimation where you say, I think this is the best theta. This is the best parameter for the scenario. We will do it in a different way. We will come up with a probability distribution. You will say, we believe uh, our initial mu was true with this probability, mu equal to one with this probability, mu equal to zero with this probability, mu equal to uh, minus one with this probability, right? This is Bayesian parameter estimation. Central question is, given some data or result, how does our belief about the world, about the model changes? Okay, this example I have uh, taken from uh, UC Irwin's uh, Professor Pedrick Smith's class. I just wanted to thank him. But let's, let's look at a uh, parameter, right? So suppose data is coming from some distribution. Uh, so this is given to you. This is something which you don't have to guess. Either it is normal or Bernoulli or binomial. You are given that and you have to figure out the parameters of that. Right, so normal, the parameters are mu and sigma. Bernoulli, what is P? In Bernoulli distribution, what is P? Success, probability of success, probability of heads. What is in binomial, N is the number of times you repeat the experiment. P is again, the Bernoulli probability. So many distributions, they can have parameters, lambda in case of exponential. But anyway, this is what is given. No, now remember the central question, how to change our belief means, what is the new probability of these parameters for the distribution given some data from the distribution, right? And this is what you will encounter in machine learning time again and again. Machine learning, what do you do? Given some data, what is your prediction? This is. So let's make it more mathematical or uh, let's, uh, uh, let's clarify what is happening with some notation. The notation is that you have an initial belief about theta, which is your parameter. Now theta could be a vector. It could be mu comma sigma when the distribution is normal. It could just be an P. In Bernoulli, it could be n comma P if it is Bernoulli. So it is some parameter, think of it as a vector, not just as a vector, but actually as a random variable. Okay, so we will think of theta as a, as a parameter which has some probability distribution. This is different from the original probability distribution, right? So your data is coming from some distribution, that's one distribution. Over that, we assume that our parameter is distributed with some other distribution. For example, if we take Bernoulli, we can say that theta is uniform between zero. That's the most obvious choice. So data distribution is Bernoulli, Parameter distribution is uniform. This is kind of a natural assumption to make when the data is coming. Understand the difference between two, these two distributions, data distribution, parameter distribution. Now you observe data, which is coming from data distribution. How do you modify your parameter distribution? 
This is the problem. This is the Bayesian approach. Why is it called Bayesian approach? We are assuming theta to be a random way. Okay, instead of a fixed value, we don't say that theta is equal to half. We say it is distributed with some distribution already, and we want to modify this distribution. Okay, so important thing to remember in MLE, theta is a number. In Bayesian approach, theta is a random variable. Okay, and that we want to modify. And uh, now, uh, if you if you look at it uh, again, since it has a random variable, it should have a probability distribution. Okay, given p theta, we want to figure out p theta given d. Right, and since you guys are now expert in Bayes theorem. What is missing here? Probability of d given theta, which should not be hard, no? Right? If I tell you that your probability, if you are doing a coin toss head with probability point one by three, you know, you get a head with probability one by three, you can figure out what is the probability that I get 10 straight heads. Right? What is the data in that case? 10 straight heads. Five straight heads, then five straight tails. And that probability you can figure out. If you fix a value of theta, you know what d is. What is the probability of theta? So that's not the hard part generally in Bayesian parameter estimation. Okay, and then it's obvious, right? Then we will just apply Bayes theorem. The probability given data, what is the distribution of theta that comes from Bayes distribution, from, from Bayes theorem. I need probability of data given theta and probability of theta. Okay, and this is again not difficult once you understand the setting. I think the notation and the names are more difficult than the uh, mathematics. Simple mathematics is Bayes theorem and here, uh, sorry, I have written it incorrectly. <laughs> yes. So tell me, what is prior and what is posterior by English words? Huh? Right. Before the, the before belief and after belief. My prior belief of theta was P theta. Prior. What is my new belief? This is posterior. And uh, can anyone take a guess? Why did I write it as proportional? Why did I uh, did not worry about P of D? This is not P of D given D. This is probability of D. Why can I, and it's, 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 it's not a probability or a Bayesian question, it is more of a mathematical question. <sighs> probability of D given D would be one. Probability of D will not be one or closer to one. Yes, it's going to be a normalization constant, right? For example, if I give you a distribution that it is distributed normally or something, and if I give you approximate, uh, like uh, my, my distribution is C times this, you can figure out C, right? How will you figure out the constant? Integrated to what? The probability of integration from minus infinity to infinity should be one. So the constants can always be figured out. And in this case, uh, P of D is going to be a normalization constant. And you will see an example. And this is why this is not really. Uh, sometimes it might be a problem. Most of the time, it is going to be a constant which we can figure out. This is the important part. Okay. So uh, let's take an example. We have a data coming from Bernoulli distribution with param parameter theta. So theta is basically the probability of success or probability of head, probability of true whatever way you want to put it, 
Okay, so this this is a Bayesian parameter estimation, and now you observe some data, right? In this case, what will be the data? Strings of strings of head and tail, right? If Bernoulli distribution is there, it is like you do the experiment once. Uh, the output is x one, x two till x n. These are the outputs of my n times going through this random experiment. So I will observe a sequence of head and tails. I initially believed there is some probability of uh, coming up with head, and then I want to figure out after looking at the sequence what was exactly the bias of my. I had initial belief about bias of my coin. Then I observed the sequence of head and tails, and now I'm asking you what is the probability of head according to you? Natural question, right? And you know the answer. How will I do it? I will do it using Bayes' theorem. For Bayes' theorem, I need probability of theta, which is prior, and probability of d given theta. Any questions about probability of d given theta? Simple, right? In a sequence, if I find h heads and n minus h tails, then this is the probability of that sequence given theta. So probability of d given theta is this. Next question is, what is prior? What was my original belief? Right? What would be the natural belief? What would you want to start with? Okay, don't look at this. What is? Uh, what do you think is the natural uh, half? Theta is equal to half, or theta is uniform. If 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 you know, it can be biased, unbiased, or see, theta is equal to half is very good when you are talking about heads and tails. But most of the time, the question would be about success and failure of an experiment, and then theta is equal to half is not a good start. It should be in the in case you don't know anything about it, a uniform probability over zero n, right? Like, what is the probability that you will pass this course? Right? Uh, that is between zero, zero and one. But now, if if I observe the data from last few times, then I would say that the probability is much closer to one than zero. Right? So. Uh, but if, if if we start with a the success uh, failure model, we probably want a uniform probability. But then we take a slightly more general form. And why am I taking a general form? This will be clear to you in a minute. Okay. So let's assume that it's a beta distribution. Okay. This is again a known distribution. It looks like this. The probability is proportional to theta to the power alpha minus one, one minus theta to the power beta minus one. Okay, I'm saying it proportional. That means this is a constant, which you can figure out by figure out by integration. Okay, so the beta distribution looks like this. And the important thing is, what if alpha and beta is equal to one? Then we get uniform probability distribution. Very good, right? So this is a uniform probability distribution when alpha is equal to when beta is equal to one. So I'm just taking a more general start, nothing else. It can definitely be stick to the uniform case. And now I do the data, I do the experiment, I get some data. I want to update my prior. And this is the small calculation which all of you can do. Right? Probability of d given theta was proportional or what is actually exactly equal to theta to the power h, 1 minus theta n minus h. Probability of theta anyway, I am writing as proportional. So I will drop one by p times alpha of theta. I get this, right? So if you forgot, uh, right? And probability of d given theta, you know. So applying this, I get this. Looking at this, what can you say? This is in itself a beta distribution, right? 
and in the new beta distribution what are my alpha prime and beta prime mm -hmm. Okay, so probably at the spot, it's harder to come up with beta, but you can come up with it, right? It was supposed to be beta minus one. What is the new beta, right? If this is the form. And you can see that plus beta or something. Anyway, you can, you can figure it out, right? Uh, something like that. So the point is that in some sense, your initial beta distribution was also outcome of some data where you, you observed alpha, alpha successes and beta failures. And that's why the distribution was like that. Once you see H many more failures and N minus H, sorry, H, H many more successes and N minus more failures, you update your data. So this is a very, very nice interpretation in terms of beta distribution okay this probably might uh, might have gone slightly quickly i will uh, again uh, spend like two three minutes in the next class but the idea of bayesian parameter estimation should be clearer we had some belief we got the data we want to update our belief update our belief as the random data okay thank you